Flow is a term used to describe a state of deep focus, where you're completely honed in on your task at hand, time seems to fly by, you enjoy the work you're doing, and your worries seem to disappear as you're doing it. As someone who has ADHD, flow has its pros and cons. It's such a great feeling when I can finally focus on one thing at a time, but at the same time, it can also be incredibly inconvenient. Focusing on one thing at a time is really relaxing, but when you need to be doing literally anything except focusing on that one thing, it's a bit of a pain. In my youth, times that I really recognized I was experiencing this state of flow or hyper focus were when I was playing The Sims 2. This might just sound like a video game obsession, but I was able to dedicate hours and hours to the Sims that I was creating, their household, their family, and their future generations. Being able to play a game like that without having like a podcast running or a movie or something else as stimulation is pretty rare for me. So when it happens, I tend to really enjoy it. So it is with amazement and some shame, that I come to you with another game that unlocked this state of flow for me. Playboy the Mansion. I'm gonna give you candy. Welcome to the Playboy Mansion. Playboy the Mansion is a simulation game that was released for the PC, Xbox, and PlayStation 2 in 2005. You may look at me and go, Mary, why are you playing this game? Well, I could easily be like, oh, it's just a part of this thrift game series where, you know, I find games when I'm thrifting and we check them out and they're weird and kooky, but like, that would be leaving out a bit of the story here. <laughs> the truth is, during my freshman year of college, I became kind of obsessed with the reality show The Girls Next Door. Originally airing in 2005, The Girls Next Door was a hit reality TV show which centered around Hugh Hefner's girlfriends. Who else has a midsummer's party? Nobody. It was a bubbly, raunchy, mostly upbeat show focusing around three beautiful women living a lifestyle that was so far separated from my own that I was just fascinated. Express who I really am, but with makeup on and nude, you know? They represented this sort of ownership of their appearance and bodies and sexuality that as someone who really struggled with confidence in my body and my appearance, I found really aspirational. So after going down a literal rabbit hole of Playboy content in my college years, when I discovered that there was a game based on Playboy, I was fascinated and of course had to check it out. The simulation game genre was huge by 2005, with the original Sims game shipping over 16 million copies. Not only that, of course, but there was also a bit of this rise in celebrity status, with tabloids flying off the shelves detailing the personal lives of people that in the past we didn't know nearly as much about. Companies could see that people were interested in controlling or playing out the lives of other people. And I think that combined with the celebrity and paparazzi culture at the time really laid the groundwork for a company that was looking to rework its brand a little to reach out to a new audience, which of course gave us Playboy the Mansion. Playboy the Mansion was developed by Cyberlore, and it would actually be the final game the company worked on as a development team. Cyberlore, a US-based company, was originally founded in 1992. Over their 13 years in business, they would release 11 games, including Warcraft 2 Beyond the Dark Portal, which was a Warcraft expansion pack, and The Majesty the Fantasy Kingdom Sim series, which was a strategy game about running a kingdom. After the release of Playboy the Mansion, the publisher that worked with Cyberlore actually dissolved, and Cyberlore itself decided to move in a different direction and pivot to creating serious games. Serious games are something I just learned about, and apparently that's the term used for games that are made for like businesses or instructional topics. Like if you're doing a training on, you know, how to be a good interviewer or how to not be terrible in the workplace, that is a serious game. Move over competitive FPS gamers. I'm the real serious gamer on the scene. Most of the advertising for the game centered around the idea that you get to be Hugh Hefner. You see, at the time, Playboy and Hef were going through a little bit of a brand shift. Hef had separated from his wife at the time and was now going out to the club with up to seven girlfriends at a time. And that doesn't include the non-girlfriends that were also coming out with them. Despite him being in his 70s, Hef was really trying to solidify the idea of him being the ultimate Playboy. 
The brand was also moving to engage with a younger audience. So Hef being seen out on the scene in clubs that Justin Timberlake or Britney Spears were at was a big deal. The mansion being featured on MTV Cribs and Playboy parties becoming the hit place for celebrities to be seen. The Midsummer's Night Dream Party is the coolest party in Hollywood. Helped bring Playboy into the modern age. So Hef became a bit of an aspirational figure, this billionaire running an empire surrounded by beautiful women was something that like apparently people liked the idea of. So taking advantage of that young bro audience, Playboy the Mansion was created. Hello everyone, welcome to my mansion. The gameplay for Playboy the Mansion feels like a combination of The Sims and a business simulator game like Zoo Tycoon. The game is split into 12 missions, which revolve around running the magazine, hosting parties, connecting with different celebrities, and building relationships for business and pleasure. You, of course, are playing as Hef, looking nothing like he would have at the time that the game came out. As Hef, you can do things like commanding your staff to work on aspects of the magazine, like writing articles, or communicate and interact with guests at parties. There is also a build mode, where you can customize and add new things into the Playboy Mansion for you or your guests to use. Coming into this game, being a really big fan of the Sims franchise, especially The Sims 2, makes this game a lot harder to enjoy. While a lot of the similar gameplay building blocks are there in terms of like clicking an object or a person and selecting the interaction, this game tends to be a lot more picky with how those interactions should work or the specific order you have to go about doing things in. And there were even some things that I just could never get to work. For example, I had this DJ booth built and whenever I told someone to interact with it, they never would. For another example, the game has these Playboy Bunny characters, which are essentially staff members that can either be bartenders or greet people as they come to parties. However, I would never be able to get them to do either if I picked. They would just like be going off and doing their own thing, which, you know, good for you. I hope you're having a good time, but also like, what's the point? <laughs> no one's making drinks at my party. How am I supposed to get my ginger ale? Sometimes I'm like, well, let's do shots and everything. <laughs> Once you do get a feel for the gameplay though, it is pretty simple to follow. The main goal or aspect of the game is to go about producing the magazine. You can actually produce an endless amount of magazines technically. With each mission, you'll usually have to do one, but you can publish as many as you want. In fact, I think I published like, I don't know, 30 issues during my time playing the game. Hef is still the editor-in-chief of Playboy magazine. Every photo and every article that goes in the magazine has to be approved by Hef. In order to create the magazine, the first thing you'll need to do is hire a staff. For this, you'll need writers, photographers, a cover model, and a centerfold model. How well your magazine will do once you do publish it will often depend on the relationships between your staff members. For example, if your photographer and centerfold model have a really good relationship, their photo shoot's probably gonna go a lot better and will get a higher star ranking. But if they hate each other, the photo shoot will probably go a lot worse and you'll get a lower star ranking. As well, as you progress in the game, you'll have access to more talented or higher star ranking staff themselves. So you're going to be constantly switching out your team, meaning you'll need to continuously be rebuilding these relationships. As an now expert in the world of Playboy publishing, this is essentially how a magazine cycle would look. First, you're going to hire any staff you need or make any staff changes. If there's anybody that's available that's a higher star ranking, get rid of the old person, get the new person, it doesn't matter. Then you're going to immediately immediately throw a party. The parties are the other sort of main gameplay element. For them, you get to look at a list of different people that you can invite, and then can invite 10 people to your party, which is a wild limitation considering that you also need to include any staff that you want there if you wanna interview anyone or take anybody's photo, which means you really only get to invite like six people to your party that aren't already a part of your staff. You got 10 bars in total for a thousand people. When it comes to who you invite, they have a number of different celebrities. Some are real, like Dita Von Tees. Some are fake, like 
pretty much everyone else. <laughs> I think at least. I'm now like very afraid that a lot of these people are actually real celebrities and I'm just outing myself as not knowing my 2000s pop culture. You know, we pack the guest list with celebrities and beautiful people. It's totally possible. <laughs> I've never met a celebrity in my entire life. But basically you'll go through your list of celebrities, pick whoever is either the most famous or most relevant to if there's any like theme that you need for the magazine for that challenge, select them and invite them. Some people might say no, most people do say yes. So then you're holding your party, which is wherever you select it to be. It has to be held at the mansion, but there are different locations like the main mansion or outside by the pool in the grotto. And at the parties, you just force interactions between people. A lot of this game is focused around the relationships built between Huff and other people and other people themselves. So basically for the entirety of the party, all you're going to be doing is either introducing people to each other so they talk to each other or spamming interactions with other people in order to build your relationships with them. I will say this is another area of the game where things get a little bit finicky because even though you can say introduce a photographer to a possible centerfold model you might walk away for five minutes and then come back and they're like angry with each other and making out with other people and that's just how it goes. So a lot of times you have to be kind of like babysitting these interactions to make sure that the people are still talking or even like make one person apologize to the other. <laughs> Super fun. The game also does have a day and night cycle, but time does not matter. Time does not matter in any way in this game. These parties can literally last for days as long as you're keeping people interacting with each other. So in order to create the magazine, I hire my staff, I host the party, I get everybody to interact with each other a ton in the party. And during that party, I do things like I have an interview with a celebrity. That's one of your best interviews ever. I do my centerfold photo shoot and I do my cover photo photo shoot. That's one of your best cover shoots ever. If you don't know about the lore of Playboy and like cover photos and centerfolds, every month there is a centerfold, which is a literal like piece of paper that folds out from the center. It's supposed to be at like the center of the magazine. A centerfold or a playmate is somebody who's in the magazine. There's only one centerfold per issue, so that girl has her own month and year. And then the cover model is actually usually a celebrity. So at your parties, you'll invite someone that is a high celebrity model who will be our cover model, and then you'll have already hired a playmate who will be the centerfold. The nice thing about the game is after you have someone be photographed as a centerfold, they become a minor celebrity, and then you can then use them as a cover model, which is nice if you don't want to be constantly rebuilding new relationships between photographers and models. By the end of the party, I'll usually have every aspect of the magazine done so I can send it to the printing press make some money, and then start the next party. The thing that really sets this game apart from other business tycoon-esque games is, of course, the beautiful women factor. I think there's two main adjectives that people think when they see us. Bimbo and slut. <laughs> A big part of this game, and of course Playboy itself, is imagery of scantily clad women. And this shows up in two major ways in the games, in the photo shoots and in girlfriends. For photo shoots, you'll get to select your model and the location of your shoot. However, all of the locations have to be within the Playboy mansion itself, which means you do have to be using that bill mode to make changes essentially to your sets. You can get set pieces or just put up different wallpaper or decorations to add some variety to your photo shoots, because they do get really repetitive. I do like the photo shoot elements in some ways because it is kind of like a dress-up game. You get to pick what outfit they're going to wear. They go through a different number of poses and you can, you know, click as the camera, zoom in, zoom out. The photography is done in a first-person mode, allowing you to get up close and personal. If you've ever wanted to be so embarrassed that you want to launch yourself to the moon, don't worry. It's actually super simple. All you have to do is be streaming a photo shoot segment of this game and be rated by someone that you really respect. <laughs> So while I did enjoy some aspects of this with them being dress up and getting to customize the background, they did get incredibly repetitive. Like I was saying, I did about 30 magazines during my gameplay, which means I was doing about 60 photo shoots. And all of the outfits for all of those shoots are the same, and the locations are the same. So other than a bit of variety in the character's appearance in terms of skin color and hair, 
these got really boring. <laughs> Basically, what I would do is as soon as I figured out the relationship between the photographer and the model is what mattered the most, is I would just like get them to be BFFs and then spam through the photo shoot. And it like, it doesn't even matter what photo you pick. It's literally just that relationship aspect that matters the most, which is wild. Like you can be taking terrible photos and the game's like, good job. Oh, wow, this is your best cover yet. one of your best cover shoots ever. I'm like, yes, thank you. I'm a photographer, I'm an artiste. Something that made this a lot worse is by the time I got to mission five in the game, so about halfway through, I could no longer use the build mode. Clicking on the button would cause my game to crash, often causing me to lose a lot of progress as well. Now, of course, this was super disappointing because I love decorating stuff. That was part of the game that I was genuinely enjoying. With some basic searching, I couldn't find anyone else that was experiencing that. So I don't know if it's because I'm running a game from 2005 on Windows 11, or if the game is just like, not the best. <laughs> We may never know. From the girlfriend side of things, Heth can build relationships with the women in the game and eventually ask them to move in and be his girlfriend. That means they live at the mansion and they'll also receive an allowance from Heth. This is actually true to life. When Heth was having his live-in girlfriends, they were receiving an allowance when they lived there. I do want to say though, that comes with the caveat of them basically like not being allowed to have jobs. So it's not a fun situation in my opinion. <laughs> One of the early missions in the game even requires for you to get three girlfriends. With the girls in the game, you can make out with them and hook up with them and no one else around you cares at all. It's very weird. Like you could be having people over that are like politicians and you're like, don't mind me, I'm just gonna like have a good time with my girlfriend real quick on the couch. And they're like, yeah, that's fine. It's the Playboy Mansion. I think Hef's already living his dream. <laughs> he likes 20 year old. However, once people become girlfriends, they don't offer like a lot of gameplay value. They literally just are like hanging out. I don't invite them to parties because they're not people that can super be involved with the magazine. People assume I come here wanting to be a playmate and that's my goal. The choice is extremely clear to me. I mean, I would much rather be Hef's girlfriend. There's not a lot of like benefit to having the girlfriends in the game. So unless it was a requirement for the mission, I just like didn't talk to them. Kind of like the shittiest boyfriend ever. They just sort of became like ghosts that hung out in the mansion between parties, haunting me in my dreams. <laughs> Ew, who's that girl? The missions or story of the game itself focus around Hef trying to run Playboy in the modern era. The game does a little bit of time bending where we're technically like starting Playboy at the start of this game, but it obviously takes place in the modern age, but the Hef in the game is obviously not modern age Hef and like younger Hef. So, you know, time is an illusion. Lunchtime doubly so. But the first few missions are focused around starting and building up the magazine, building those relationships and printing issues. After that, the missions start to dive into actual real life issues that Playboy and Hef would have been experiencing around that time. Resolving drama between the girlfriends, following market research to make a successful themed issue, connecting with politicians to try and push back against the conservative movement that was happening at the time that threatened the livelihood of publications like Playboy. Start producing video content due to the invention of the VCR worsening Playboy sales. Launch a TV channel, launch a jazz festival, launch a website. And finally, also celebrate Playboy's 50th anniversary. The hottest and most private party in the world. Playboy's 50th anniversary celebration. I'm honestly impressed with how closely the missions in the game do follow things that Playboy would have actively been experiencing as a company. The missions, while like a bit annoying at times, they do make sense within that universe, which helps because a lot of other aspects of the game don't make a ton of sense. For example, Hef wouldn't be having photo shoots in his home. Playboy actually had two separate studios, one in Chicago and one in LA for photo shoots. I'm a junior photo editor at Playboy. Where's Michelle? 
they wouldn't have been happening at his house and the volume that they do in this game. Writers at Playboy also like wouldn't be working in the Playboy Mansion. They had their own office and while there were staff members at the Playboy Mansion and people that worked for the magazine there, it wouldn't be like the entire magazine team working out of the Playboy Mansion. The Playboy Mansion was a home first and foremost. I really love my job, but there is a lot of responsibility. Also, all of the staff members in this game are way too young. For example, Hef's personal secretary, Mary, who was working at the mansion all the time, was like Hef's age. Like, she was older. And that's just not represented at all in the game. In fact, like every female character uses pretty much the same model, and they're all just young voluptuous women. I think the men get a bit more variety, but like if you're a woman, <laughs> you gotta be hot in this universe, okay? And of course, the other glaring flaw is a Hef wouldn't have a girlfriend who wasn't blonde, okay? There's some simple requirements here. <laughs> this game isn't fully bad, but it isn't also fully good. It again fits into a category that I've often referenced in these thrift game videos of being a thing of its time. Like this game could not exist in any other time period. It only works in 2004, 2005. And while elements of the gameplay feel unique with it being a relationship focused business tycoon, the parts of it that are like Sims for adults is not. <laughs> Singles, Flirt Up Your Life, The Partners, and Seven Sims are a few examples of games that have that kind of like similar energy of like, oh, it's The Sims, but it's steamy and for adults. The Partners is even also relationship focused. It's like a, a law firm one, which I'm fascinated by being someone that wanted to be a lawyer for a period of time. <laughs> However, I will say, of course, this game being from the Playboy brand itself probably was a positive and did some of the heavy lifting when it came to advertising and sales. As Charles Harold put it in an article for the New York Times, Mansion is just a mediocre Sims clone that will sell better than other mediocre Sims clones only because of its risque content. The game would receive basically a 6 out of 10 review from most platforms or publications, with similar critiques that this is basically a half-baked experience riding off of the coattails of The Sims and the Playboy brand itself. GameStop's review of the game by Ryan Davis captures this feeling really well in its closing statement. They write, Beyond simply not being a particularly compelling game, Playboy the Mansion seems to balk at presenting the swinging spirit of the Playboy name and openly treats both Hefner and the Playboy reader like a commodity. Like Hef himself, who has gradually shifted from outspoken cultural icon to caricature corporate mascot, there's not a lot of Playboy left in the mansion. Playboy magazine was at one point considered pretty radical in some ways, and obviously pushed what was acceptable in publishing, not only when it came to obviously the photography content, but with some of the articles as well. There is a reason for the saying, I get it for the articles. They did have some really interesting and long-term impactful works published in the magazine. I do think it's pretty easy to see that like, this isn't really reflective of that. That's not the focus or point of this game. My copy, it looks like originally retailed for about $45, which in 2005, doing an inflation calculator, would be equivalent to $72 today, which first of all, cost of living, RIP. But second of all, that is pretty expensive for a game that has like little to no replay value and frankly like limited gameplay itself. And considering that the game had a lot of like bugs and glitches and didn't really fully work for me, I'm like, was it working for the people that originally played it? I don't know. If we're gonna compare something like this to The Sims 2, which I've probably put in over a thousand hours to, you can't, you just can't compare them. It's apples to oranges and Sims 2 is the winner. While I've covered a number of different kind of show or movie tie-in games on this series in the past, 
Playboy the Mansion is the first one that is like a brand or like human based tie in that I've experienced. And I think that there's a good reason why we don't see too many of these games. At this point, I see this game and kind of similar things that would come later as brand tie ins to be a cash grab. And while I wouldn't describe this necessarily as shovelware, I think this is an example of a game that did sort of help pave the road for the shovelware mess that was like the 2000s and 2010s. So I was able to play it and enjoy it. Yes, it itched a part of my brain that I hadn't itched in a while. But does that mean I think it is a good game? No, it's not. <laughs> Through this video, I also featured clips from The Girls Next Door, which wouldn't actually have aired until after the game came out, but did cause a huge surge in popularity for Playboy. I believe that The Girls Next Door sort of helped reframe Playboy as being this kind of like skeezy publication to being more like fun and flirty and even empowering to women who are proud of not only their accomplishments, but their appearance. And I think it's important to get to be proud of both. After watching the first five seasons of the show, I actually ended up reading Holly Madison's autobiography, which details her experience dating Hugh Hefner and living at the Playboy Mansion for seven years. To be frank, it wasn't a good time. <laughs> Hef and Playboy itself had a bit of this balancing act of being a supporter of free speech and sex positivity, while also creating a really like controlling and often unsafe environment for the women who were involved in it. That being said, there's a lot of nuance to this conversation. A ton of people have had a variety of experiences within the Playboy world. And at the end of the day, I always recommend listening to or reading the firsthand accounts of the people who were actively experiencing it. At this point in my life, it tends to show up as sort of a like nostalgic gaze of this brand that was really popular in the 2000s or that like older girls would wear merch from and stuff like like that. I mean, I myself <laughs> am guilty of this, but just because I have this nostalgic gaze for it and I do believe there are some positives doesn't mean I fully support the brand or the actions of individuals involved with the brand. I think the game sort of represents a lot of my overall feelings for it. In fact, there's good and there's bad, but the good doesn't outweigh the bad, nor do I think it's worth it the cost. Just popping in right here to let you all know that this video, as well as my next planned video, might not be able to be monetized due to the content in them. So I just wanted to let you know a couple of other ways you can support me if you would like to. The first and kind of easiest I would say is you can subscribe to me on Twitch. It's $5 a month to subscribe, I believe, and it lets you watch all of my streams with ad-free viewing. You don't have to watch my streams though, that's just an easy way to support me if you do want to. And I do also have a throne set up, which I've put a number of different items kind of as a wish list, which are things that you could gift for me that kind of help me out with my day-to-day -day life. It's stuff from like, vitamins to, to dolls. Dolls help me with my day-to-day -day life. But obviously no pressure. I just wanted to let you all know with videos like these that are on spicier topics, I don't know if they'll be able to be monetized. So if you do want to support me in other ways, that's the easiest way to do it. Thank you all so much for joining me today. If you'd like to see some of my other thrift game or video game essays, I'll have a playlist up here that you can check out. If there's a game that you would like for me to keep an eye out for when I'm thrifting, please put it in the comments down below. Did you ever play Playboy the Mansion? I'm really curious. Or maybe was there another kind of Sims knockoff that you were really into? I personally played a lot of the movies growing up, which I don't remember like anything of now, excluding the logo on the box. That is like ingrained in my mind. <laughs> I hope you all are having a fantastic day and a great start to the year. Happy 2024. I'm hoping to make a lot of content this year and I'm hoping you'll stick around for some of it. Thank you all so much for watching and I'll see you all next time. Bye-bye.